Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and this is my tester, Alex. I recently built an I-beam that runs half the length of the shed so that I can lift heavy things from outside to inside, or vice versa, because I never wanted to install a permanent ramp, nor did I want to have to store temporary ramps. And this I-beam with this little trolley never gets in the way. So here, I've got the I-beam extended out in its holders because it can slide inside of its mounts. It's mounted to the uh, rafters up here, and it can slide out up to four feet outside the shed to pick up a heavy load, such as my tester here. Let me show you how this works. So I can pick up heavy loads from outside, and then I can drag them inside. And then I can bring the heavy loads back outside and set them down. Gently, of course. <laughs> so I measured my web and then set my bandsaw fence here to be 3.01 inches so that these shims I'm about to cut will fit. And so now I'm just going to rip a few of these. Yep, perfect. And now I'll stack this quarter inch one on this eighth inch one, roughly, several ways down here and uh, get this all lined up. And I'm going to set my caliper to the depth I'm expecting between the top of the, well, what is now the top of the flange and down to the web. And I'll check this at every point down along the way. And here you can see it's all clamped up and ready to go. So let me tack this real quick. Yep, I wasn't on. I need to turn this up to 11. And tack this side. Okay. I'm going to make a mark every foot because I, I'm not going to tack, I'm not going to weld the entire beam. I'm just going to tack weld it fairly robustly every foot. That's all I'll need. Check my measurements and tack. Check my measurement and tack. And here's all my tack welds on this side. You can see it's a little, my, flan, my flanges are a little twisted on this end. So I'm going to clamp these up and use a little bit of muscle and get it perpendicular. Yeah, kind of like so. There we go. And then I'll go and tack weld this entire side more robustly than the first side. I'll give it double here on the end. And this piece is going to be the first piece of my little trolley that's going to ride on that I-beam. There we go. Make another one of these. Okay, just like I did with my first one, I'm going to lower my bit, and only now on this, this time, I want to keep it obviously on the same plane here, so I'm just going to move a single axis over to here. We're going to lower that, lock the spindle down again, and then I can drive my bearing exactly where I want it, just touching this jaw over here. Back off, try it one more time, come in approach, right there. Okay. Unlock my spindle, get rid of that, change to my center drill, and drill right there. Piece of cake positioning. And there we have it. Okay, so these are going to go just like this. Problem here, though, is these bolt heads that I have on these 5 sixteenths are too thick because the bolt's got to go through like this on both sides, of course. Oh, how about I uh, actually do this first? That's got to go through like that. And then when this stands up, it's got to be able to ride on that flange without hitting the web right here. Uh, this will not allow that to do that. So what I'm going to need to do is find me some um, 
flathead screws, you know, that are countersunk to go right on there that are just barely big enough. Uh, and that should be fine. Or I guess option two is to simply take these and grind them down, you know, really, really thin, which would be a lot simpler. If I don't have, if I don't have the flathead screws that I need, then I'll just grind these down really, really thin. So let me go see what I've got. But that's basically how this is going to go together. These are probably also a little too long. I could use some shorter ones. So this will go on one side. This, of course, will go on the other side. Well, that would have been something if that would have worked. And then, you know, it'll ride like this up and down the, uh, up and down the bottom flange. So, but as it is, well, hmm. You know what? Let me see something here. Look at this. Yeah. Yeah, that distance is, uh, huh. Well, yeah, I'm going to have to grind them a little bit because I've got to allow at least an eighth of an inch for that flange, or excuse me, for the web. And I want full bearing contact. I don't want, you know, half the bearing hanging off the bottom flange. So this here gives me about one and a quarter. So yeah, so each of these bolt heads will have to be ground down quite a ways, but that's not any of that big a deal. I've definitely got equipment for that. So, but that's how that's gonna go. So new plan, I've drilled a hole in the end of this block here and I'm threading my bolts inside there because I'm gonna cut the heads off with the bandsaw. There we go. Okay, that'll be nice and square. Now I can go cut that off in my horizontal bandsaw. Perfect. That's what I want. Two more. Okay, I've got my small head bolts. So what we're gonna do is something like this. Put that guy on there. Nice. Okay. Look at that. Man. How about those? Those are nice and slim. Okay. Put my lock nuts on the back side. I'm not going to tighten them just yet. I've got just enough lock nut so that I can grab the um, the nylon in there. Okay. Well, this is great. This is absolutely great. A piece of cake too. That one's still a little hot. So this piece here is going to go you know, about there. I'm not going to put it all the way down at the bottom because I, I may want to have another reinforcement thing, uh, probably a bushing, a spacer between the two, but I need to drill a hole here. But I want to get this in place before I attempt to drill any holes. Um, you know, actually, I probably should match drill those holes first. I should probably take these bearings out, put both of these plates back over there, and then drill that hole. Unless I don't want a hole. It's going to be much harder to drill the hole afterwards because this is going to act as a fulcrum and these two are going to want to collapse together. Um, I don't know. I'm also going to leave this sticking out one end because I may want to drill a hole here in this to attach a uh, pulley thing or something. So I'm going to leave that sticking out. I'm going to leave about a oh, quarter inch, I suppose, between this piece and the bottoms of my bearings. Because that flange, well, oh, that no, no, no. That's a quarter inch flange, not a um, eighth inch flange. So let me leave a half inch. That way there's a quarter inch clearance. So about there. Let me go ahead and make a mark. So here I'm just checking to make sure everything is coplanar, perpendicular, and parallel, as necessary. Because I want these, obviously, to be perfect. And my wooden shims here will give me that little extra spacing I need. And then I'll just fill the gap between that one inch piece and this top trolley piece here with weld here in a minute, after I tack it. Tack it right there on that end. And tack it down here.
And so this is the holder that's going to go up into the ceiling joist. I've got my spacer. Oh, there it goes. Get my spacers out. And so this piece here simulates the flange. It's going to fit in there like so, and it'll be able to slide. Then I got to drill some holes in this so I can mount it to the ceiling. And let me put a little bit more weld on these tabs. I've got it temporarily clamped to the ceiling here. And so now I'm just going to grind my welds down so that this can slide smoothly. Okay, now I need to actually screw this up in there. So I've converted this into a T-beam with a screw every foot, and then I've got this mount screwed into that beam, and it's solid. Come on. <laughs> this isn't a toy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it looks like we may be doing this for a while, but hopefully this inspires you to come up with something similar if you have a similar problem or somebody that just wants to mess around. <laughs> well, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson. You know who that is. And thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. You're good.